Hello, Hello Floss, Floss Tube. Tube. We're, We're the, the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. I'm Priscilla. And I'm Chelsea. And Ronnie's at home. Cash is napping. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here to show you how to mount Queen Bee Flower Farm, just a truck portion, on sticky boards. Sticky, sticky, sticky. So this is the <laughs> long-awaited video for somebody looking to finish a project on mm -hmm. sticky board by Priscilla. So this is your chance to gain all the information that she does in her basement. But not in the basement, <laughs> on a beautiful set. Yes, we're still all at right. the pack <laughs> shop. So what do you start with? Okay, so first of all, I measured my piece to see what size I would like it to be. And I'm gonna cut it with a guillotine trimmer. So this is sticky board that you can purchase at the Fat Quarter Shop. She's yep. gonna use a five by seven piece. Links are below. Does it matter what side you, you cut? I'll let you cut it since you're here. Okay. Lord of mercy. What am I cutting? I'll put it all the way up at the top. Okay. And then we need, um, what did I say? Five and a half by three? Five and a half by three and a half. Okay. There you go. Oh, it cut good. Okay. There's a sharp. <laughs> Five and a half by three and a half. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's first time for everything. <laughs> These shirts weren't made for that, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this has a sticky side. You peel it off. I am going to add some batting to this one. So we're using the batting squares. These are eight by eight squares. They're also available at the Fat Quarter Shop and they're listed below. These are what we used when we did those string quilts. So we had mm -hmm. some extra left over that we'd be able to use at home. Um, and also just prefacing this, before we started any of the finishing things, we ironed our stuff. So face right. down, stitches down on a towel uh, with, we use steam. You can if you want to, but steam out all of the wrinkles so your piece has a nice finished look on it. Sometimes I use batting and sometimes I don't. Usually on the smaller pieces, I will use batting. The batting can also hide any imperfections. Especially that you in have. the round or oval finishes. And the good thing about these pre-cut squares is that they're 80-20. Um, I've been told that the co if you just use cotton, um, that your piece would shift a little bit more. So this has kind of a grip to the fabric once you lay it on there, and it's not going to shift when you're finishing it. So something wouldn't end up off center once you like flip it over to finish it on the back. Okay, so there's a sticky side and it's the side with the printing and you just peel it off and I cut a piece of batting that's the same size and I just put that on top of it. And, and this then, is just going to give it some dimension, right? Right. And then I place it on the area. I'm bad about trimming it down until I get it on my piece, so then I will trim it a little bit closer so I don't have as much bulk in the back. You could do this with a rotary cutter or scissors. Okay, so I'm using a hot glue gun to attach it. And what I do usually is I'll pick it up to make sure that everything is right in the... I like to, to mount my stitching and have it close, like a, not a lot of edge, edge or black fabric or cross stitch fabric showing. I want it to be all about the design. So that looks perfect. So then I turn it over and I use hot glue. So when we, you're purchasing a hot glue gun, so there's those mini the good glue, ones, yes. yes. <laughs> those mini glue guns, you will go through 20 before you're satisfied. So you invest in a good glue gun. I mean, you can use it for mm -hmm. any craft you do. Make sure that it's a it's good one that gets your hands really too. hot. So I just use a little bit in the corner. Now this is the part people get confused about. So you do and the I, corners first. Yes, and I fold it up and I just press it down. I don't use a lot of glue because sometimes you want to take it off and you can peel it off if there's just a little bit of hot glue. Okay. And if you're just using a little, it's not going to seep through and burn your hands. Unless maybe you're well, using... Well, you can little. still burn your hands. But <laughs> so it's... I've got the two sides done and then... I like to pick it up again and just check. And it wouldn't matter if people had like surged their edges or anything. They could just no, glue right, it right, right down. Okay, so now I've got three of the sides done and I'm doing the fourth corner. And you just pull it a little bit tight, but not extremely tight so that you're distorting the fabric. Right, or the sticky board but goes through the corner. But you can see how, oh, I'm supposed to show it this way, sorry. You can see how it's all in the frame. So then 
I take the sides and I add a line of glue and I just fold it up and hold it until it sticks and press it down with my fingers. Then I'll go over and do the other side. But you don't want to yank it really hard so that you're distorting it. And these ends can be loose because you can go back and attach them to make it your corners really crisp. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people have troubles with the corners. And then I'll put a little bit of extra glue underneath those sides and then fold the ends up. And if you want to, in between, to check to make sure that, you know, you're getting it all right and flip it over. Now, if you had a lot of excess fabric, you're going to trim. Can yes. you trim at this point, too, if you still have more? Yeah. Well, I don't like to. I like to do it right when I lay the, the, it, the sticky board on top of it. Okay. So then you have your corners, and they're a little bit gappy. So you just take a little bit of glue. This glue gun's different from mine. It has a bigger tip, but mine has a smaller tip, and it's easier to get in there. And you just pinch it together, and that'll make your corner so that it's... Perfect. And you just go around and do all four sides like that. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you get a little bit of glue on the back of your fabric, just don't get it on the front because the back of the, it's not going to show. But then you can take your fingers and like press the corners like that to make them more pointy and squared off. But there it is and it's all on the sticky board and then I'm going to show you what I do to add to the back of it. All right, so we've attached the stitching to the sticky board. Where are with, we at now? With a layer of batting underneath. And this is the frame. Kimberly had this. She had gotten it at Michael's, and I think that this is going to be really cute on here, but first we're going to add a couple of layers of gingham. So we're going to use a torn piece, so Chelsea's going to tear this for me to get a, a flat edge, because sometimes when you get your fabric, it's not exactly even, and you got to tear it first one time so that... So I have been tearing fabric for something that we're going to, and I cut a, an inch off to get a perfect line first. And then you'll cut to the size that you need. So this kind of evens okay. out the fabric. All right, do an inch for me then. This is a professional ripper now. Thank you. We only ripped like 300 pieces of fabric to go to the retreat. <laughs> Just a little snip at the end and pull. And make sure you do it at the end, not in the middle. <laughs> Found that out the hard way. <laughs> And that gives you kind of that ruffly look that mm -hmm. old and crusty, right? Yes. So sometimes I just glue it on and sometimes I gather it with a thread and needle. And I have these big soft sculpture <laughs> doll needles that I like to use because they're easy. So, and I use button and craft thread or something. And I just do a big gathering strip. So she's just taking her needle and flip-flopping the fabric back and forth onto the needle. And you get a really cute gathered piece when you do it that way. When you do it with the glue, it's a little bit less foofy, I think. But if you don't have the needle, you don't have the thread, you can certainly yep, just whatever glue you and gather. Do. So you put a little glue, gather a piece. Put a little glue, gather a piece. And this is a rustic look, so you're going to have threads that you're going to have to yeah, trim off trim if you don't off. want them. Okay. And then you cut off the selvage too, so that doesn't show.
Those are such pretty scissors. Mm -hmm. We don't have good scissors like that. We have those ugly orange ones. <laughs> okay, so this might not be enough for what I want, so I might have to do another strip. No, that's good. It's good. Okay, so what I do usually is I'll lay it down like that and make sure that I have enough to fill it up. And then I'll attach the two, once I get it to how big I want it, I'll attach the two ends together. Do you want a little bit more? A little bit more what? Backing. No, I think we're good because we're going to add a backing of the black. So you just want to try to get it kind of even. So I'm going to flip the gingham over or the stitch piece over and then I'm going to glue the gingham to the back of it. But first I'm going to just knot this a little bit. Cut off some of these extra threads. Okay, so then you just place it on here. And I usually start towards a corner of the bottom and just put a little bit of glue. You can always go back and add more if you feel like you need it. And just be careful not to get it in it until you want it in it. And where you put your glue along your stitch piece is going to tell you how much shows, how much peeks through the, the back of the, mm -hmm. the project. And you can kind of even out your gathers as you go along. I'm going to probably need another glue stick. I try to do this kind of quickly at home. I'm going a little bit slower here so that if I turn it over and it's a little bit wonky that I can fix it. So hopefully it's not going to be wonky. Where the glue <laughs> hasn't dried yet, you right. can just replace it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just take a peek. And you can pull up on it, especially if you don't use a whole lot, to make it bigger if you need to make it bigger. And cut off your threads. I just pulled that up a little bit and I'm moving it up a little bit because it was too short. So hot glue is very forgiving like that if you don't use a lot. Plus the batting underneath gave it a lot of dimension. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of this black gingham and I'm going to cut another piece of sticky board and then this will go on top. I'm going to add some more glue to the back of that. We are using another piece of sticky board and this is the 5 by 7 size. And we're going to use this for the background and I'm going to attach the black gingham to this. And this is the black gingham. Do you want to... Feel yeah. that a little bit. And typically you like your flat boards to be kind of a neutral color so you can swap out mm -hmm. the seasons or things mm -hmm. that you do with it. So it's not, so each time you're not swapping out the backdrop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I like my gingham fabrics on the bias. So I lay it upside down and then I just place this, I find the, the squares and I place it right on there. Okay. And then I cut around it. You keep any last scrap because you can use it for yes. anything. Even the sticky board scraps you can keep to help build up uh, projects in the future if you needed them. If I have to put two pieces of sticky board together, I use the pieces like this to like run a bridge between them. Okay, so we're going to do it again with the corners. And this would be maybe a good way. Yes, if you're going to try this for the first time, do your fabric first yeah. before you do your stitching.
And again, just a small dot to keep it mm -hmm. in place, but you could rip it out if you needed to. And then just fold it up. It's like you're wrapping a package. I haven't seen you wrap a package lately. We usually get just the bag it came in, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I wrap a few gifts at Christmas. A few too many. And just fold it down to make sure it's flat. And you can always add glue anywhere you need it. Like right there. Okay. Just a line of glue and fold it up. Now say this were an ornament or something where the back might show. Mm -hmm. You could put a piece of felt on the back, right? Mm -hmm. Or, um, or another do, piece of fabric. Or another piece of sticky board with fabric on it if you wanted to really make it yeah, so there, there are ways to finish it, but if we're putting it on the back of a frame like this, we you're don't not going to see the it. back. Right. So why waste the fabric or the, or the time. board? Yeah. But ornaments and things like that, a piece of fabric or a piece of felt would be beautiful. So there you go. Then we take the piece that has the ruffle on it and put it on there, and then I take hot glue And center it on there. Just slap it on. Mm -hmm. And the hot glue is very forgiving so you can move it around a little bit. And it's fun because just the corners are peeking out. Oh, wrong way, sorry. So then to attach it to this frame, we're just gonna open up the clip and stick the, the gingham board back there. And then your stitching isn't clipped. You're not worried about mm -hmm. your stitching being wrecked. It's on that back board. That's beautiful. It's all done. So for me, this is the perfect thing that I could change it out with the seasons and there would be different fabrics and different trims and I would probably add a bow at the top. But this is a good way to start out and it, it's cute. It's, it was a quick piece to stitch and it turns out really cute. It's a frame, and then you could stick this on a hutch, on a in a vignette. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be up on the wall, so you're not putting a ton of holes in the it, wall. It's right. something you can incorporate into all your, dec and your it, decor. It has the stand back here, but if you want it to be more upright, you get an easel. So, it's cute. And this is the Queen Bee, the truck from Queen Bee Flower Farm, my collaboration with Hands on Design. I draw the chalkboards, she makes the charts, and that's it. So, thank you for joining us. You can follow us. Oh, yes, you can follow <laughs> us on Instagram at Priscilla Blaine at Chelsea356, Priscilla's2000 on Facebook, and Priscilla's2000.blogspot.com, where you can see more of everything like this. So come join us and join us in our Stitching with the Housewives group.